In this video, we're going to be going over how to create a new custom form tool within the tool database and then use that to create a simple but effective raised panel design with sharp corners, which we can then cut out from the remaining material to use for a simple but effective project. Let us close this down and get started. Let us start by opening an existing file which comes with our tutorial. Go to opening an existing file and then we'll open the cabinet door vector file which is installed with this tutorial. We'll select it and click on open. Here you can see a basic outline for our vector which will become our raised door panel. This will be cut around with our special form tool which currently we do not have in this tool database. We will need to add this ourselves manually so that we can then use this to cut out our part. This will use a specially designed vector to create the form tool within our tool database. We could create this using our create vector tools over here in the drawing panel or sometimes we are able to download an existing vector design for the form tool, which we can then import and then modify to become a usable form vector. Let's import a sample vector file for this to show you what this could look like. We'll go to the import vectors icon here in the file operations, and then we'll use this to load the RPOG file we have here. This is an EPS file, though yours might come as a DXF or a DWG or any number of vector files that we support. Check in our FAQs for more information on this to see a full list. Alternatively, click on all files here and you can see that it lists all of the different file formats which we can import as vectors. So we'll open this up and as you can see, a basic outline of our form tool has appeared on the screen. As it is right now, unfortunately this could not be used as a form tool. What we need to do is make some alterations to it so that all we have is the rightmost side piece of this form tool. We do not want this top vector or the whole left hand side. To make these alterations we will be using node editing, which I will activate by clicking on the node editing mode here. We need to cut this entire top half off and also split this in the middle. So we want to hover our mouse over this top line and right click. We want to delete this whole span so that it no longer exists. Next, we want to also right click on this center point here. You can see because this is the middle of the span, my mouse pointer is snapping to it for me so that this will help with this operation. Right click and we can use cut vector. As you can see here, this whole half side has deselected. It is now cut away from this right hand side. Lastly, we want to make sure that the start node, this green node here, is actually down here in the bottom left hand corner, as this is required for the form tool to correctly identify the vector. So what you need to do is right click on this node once more, and then use the option to make a start point. As you can see, the green node has now switched to this point over here, leaving this in the correct orientation for us to use for our form tool. It's important to note that the start point needs to be the leftmost bottom node out of all of the nodes in this form tool, and the final point needs to be the rightmost upper point. If any of these nodes was to go below the start point, or any of these nodes to go above or to the right of the end point, this would not be considered a usable form tool, and some adjustments would need to be made. Let's just right click to turn off node editing for now. And I'm just going to select the left hand side which I no longer want and press delete. We should now have a vector suitable for making our form tool. So I'm going to select it once more, go to the toolpaths menu and select tool database. Here you can see a basic tool database and I'm just going to add a new tool and change the tool type to form tool. Because you can see our form tool has appeared here in the drawing, this means that it has been accepted as a usable form tool. The software automatically knows that it wants to have two sides to this form tool, so it has created them for me, and it reads in the physical size of the form tool to use as the diameter. If the form tool is a smaller size, you will need to resize the vector before using it to create this form tool. We'll click on Create Settings, and apply some simple values here for our hypothetical form tool. Uh, let's have a pass step of half an inch and we'll keep a step over of 20% just for this project. Uh, I won't cover these feeds and speeds as those will be specific to your machine and your tool depending on what material you cut. I'll click apply and OK. And we have now created our form tool. 
Let's go back out to the full view of the project and we won't actually need this form tool vector anymore. So we can just delete this off the project. It's been saved into the tool database and will be there forevermore. So now that we have our tool ready, we want to start looking at getting our toolpaths prepared. So this vector that we have here on the screen is our outside vector for the final piece. So what we want to do to work with our form tool, we're going to create an inward offset. So we're going to use the offset vectors tool and we're going to choose to offset inwards. And the distance for this project that we're going to be using is going to be 1.375 inches. Uh, we are going to want some sharp corners and we'll just turn that on and click offset. And as you can see here, we have our offset vector already created in the job for us now. Let's close out of this. And now we want to move across to our toolpaths form. So we can use the switch option up at the top here. And click once I click this, we'll switch across to our toolpath panel. Now that we're in the toolpaths panel, let's just open up the material setup form and check that we have everything where we want it. So currently we've got the XY datum in the center of the job. We can change this down to the lower left so that we can use that as the datum for our CNC machine when we are setting this up. The material thickness is correct at 0.75 and we are going to be measuring our Z0 on the machine from the material surface. So this is also correct for the machine we've got set up. The rapid Z gaps above the material is the distance above the material which the machine will begin to start using rapid movements. We're fine to leave these at one eighth of an inch here just because there's nothing in the way on our machine that would get in the way of the tool bit as it moves around. Likewise, we want the home and start positions to be on the datum. So X and Y can stay at zero. And the Z gap above the material is the distance the tool will move above the material before and after it begins running a toolpath. So again, quarter of an inch is perfectly okay for this. I'll click OK to close down the material setup form. The values used here though are for our machine on this project, so it shouldn't be copied verbatim in your own projects. Let's move on to creating our toolpath for our new form tool that we've created earlier. I'm going to create a profile toolpath with the inner vector selected that we created using the offset tool. In this toolpath, we're going to have a start depth of zero because we want to cut from the top of the material. We'll have a cut depth of 0.5 so half an inch to suit the design of our door, we will select the tool that we've created in the tool form. While I'm here, I shall also show that you can edit a tool directly in the tool database using this form. So for example, I can change the name of this tool to RPOG, and then it'll use the tool type, the diameter and the units to create the rest of the full name for me. So I can click OK and that has renamed our tool directly in the tool database so that we can use that to easily identify it in the future. I can also change the other settings for this tool. So I shall change the path depth to 0.2 inches and then click apply and select. And that tool is now selected, ready to create this tool path. If I want to make a change to the tool information for just this tool path without actually changing the saved information in the tool database, I can instead click edit and then apply any changes I want to it directly here. So for example, change the path step to one quarter of an inch, click OK, and those tool settings will be used for this tool path only and not saved to the tool database. This can be very useful for short, quick changes for one-off tool paths, which you will not be using repeatedly in the future. We're going to machine this vector on the outside and won't change anything else on the tool form other than the name of the tool path which we're just going to change to Profile OG. I click Calculate, and as you can see, my toolpath has been created. Let's just click on Preview Selected Toolpath to show you what this looks like now. As you can see, it took a couple of passes and has created us this design. Let's reset the view, close the toolpath preview, and reopen the tool form by double clicking on the toolpath name. So now that we can see how the toolpath is going to look when it's been cut out on the machine, we can identify a couple of issues that we need to be aware of. The main one that we've got to keep an eye on is the fact that the tool is going to be cutting outside of where our designated material space is. If your material is this exact size, you need to be aware of where this toolpath is going to cut when planning your hold downs. For example, everything along this side 
and this side on the left and right are both going to be completely removed by the larger OG tool. So we want to make sure there are no clamps in that area, for example. Another thing to be aware of is that with the current way we have this set up, we have rounded corners on our raised panel, which for this design isn't something we actually want. This is something we can address, however, with some of the settings in our 2D profile toolpath. With this open, we can now come down to the corners section here and turn on sharp external corners. This will tell the software that we want to cut sharp corners and it needs to plan around this. With this selected, we can now just click Calculate once more, and it will replan the toolpath to try and account for this. If we reset our preview, and then preview all toolpaths, you can see now that the toolpath has accounted for the sharp corners and added these in for us. So now we have our four sharp corners. This is looking good. Now that we have the form profile that we're looking for for our design, we can now go on to create a profile toolpath to cut out the final piece from the background material. Let's close out of the preview toolpath, go to the profile toolpath, and just switch back to the 2D view. Now we want to select the outer vector that we originally started with, which is the outside boundary of our final piece. Set a start depth for 0.5 so that it begins its toolpath at the same depth that the OG tool finished at and a cut depth of 0.25 so that this toolpath will cut completely through the material. We'll change the tool to a quarter inch end mill. It will cut outside of the vector as before, and we want to add in some tabs. So we'll turn on the add tabs to toolpath. We want one inch long tabs, and we're gonna have them at one eighth of an inch thick. And then we'll click on edit tabs so that we can begin to add them. We're going to manually add in some tabs ourselves so that we can choose where exactly we want them on this piece. We'll have one at the top and one at the bottom and two on each side so that this is held down quite firmly. Once we've added where we want our tabs, we can just click close and then click calculate. We'll preview our selected toolpath. And you can see here that we've now cut out our piece and we will have some small tabs to cut through ourselves once we're finished. So at this point, you can go ahead and save your toolpaths to output to your CNC machine. To learn how to do this, please refer to the dedicated saving toolpaths guide tutorial that you can find in the related video sections for this tutorial. So now in this tutorial, we've gone through and covered how to create a new custom form tool and then use that to create a sharp angled raised panel from a simple profile toolpath. We can then cut it out with another profile toolpath using a simple end mill to get a nice final piece. Thanks very much for watching our tutorial on the raised panel and I hope you have enjoyed it.